so here's what I do with fishing in the winter time. Um, as you can see, I have a netting out here. Um, just so, you know, I don't have to worry about leaves going down there and increasing the nitrate and whatnot. The fish is more or less pretty active as you see right now. Um, here's the, here's one guy right here. That's uh, one of my fancies, which I'm gonna take in either, uh, probably not tonight, but tomorrow. I'm gonna move him in. Water temperature's uh, decently cold right now. Uh, it's around the 44, for, for low 40s, uh, which really isn't ideal for all the fancy goldfish. I'm gonna take them in. Koi, it's fine. We're gonna be getting like low 20 temperature next week. So I'm moving my fancies in uh, for winter this time of year. Koi is real too fine. Comet goldfish, real too fine. Uh, I just took a tank out of my garage, uh, washed it a little with my um, pond water. We're gonna dump that one now. Uh, I'm gonna, I was, I did this so I could check for leaks. We're gonna wash the filter and we're gonna have a tank running for tonight and uh, nothing wrong. I'm gonna check the water parameters tomorrow morning. If nothing's wrong, we'll take a fish, I'll scoop a fancy goldfish out here. Um, I'm gonna take it in there and that's gonna be the plan. It's a new filter for this. Um, so basically the steps of washing and filter is pretty easy. Basically you just squeeze it because it's a sponge, you know. You go in there, oh dang, the water's cold. And then you just wash it a little. Because this is non-chlorinated water, it doesn't matter. You're just trying to get some of the bacteria in there. Um, this is like a protector thing. that lets air bubbles go out, just rinse that out. Now this is, and the filter part is pretty, uh, pretty much good to go. Um, there's definitely gonna be a significant water difference, but uh, moving a fish from colder water to warm water is uh, typically less problematic than moving a, a fish from warm water to colder water. So I don't really foresee too much of a problem. I'm gonna keep the water pretty low because it's just to for a tank perimeter check. Uh, the water temp is probably gonna match somewhere around my room temp water, which is gonna be around 50-ish degrees. It's gonna be a 10 degree raise-ish. Uh, so tomorrow we're gonna actually take more water from a pond and put it in uh, so Tonight it's just to see if a filter works How long that time that was, but the deal now is uh, after we got that done, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna. I want I want to have some gravel in here. So one easy way is I got some left leftover gravel from a couple years back. Um, keep the door open so you guys can see. Gravel. So we're just gonna take. Um, the ideal substrate is sand, so that's not something I can get my hands on at this time. So we're just gonna substitute with half gravel, half bear tank. The good of the gravel is, you no, know, first of all, aesthetics. Uh, the downside to gravel is uh, it's gonna be hard to clean uh, with a siphon technique. So we're just gonna rinse off the gravel. What's gonna happen? Gonna have a little bit of water come in here. We're just gonna use natural water. Just gonna wash that. I'm gonna do that a couple times. I'm gonna do the same thing with plants too. As you see, I'm just showing the process. If you don't have that, um, ideally you will you want to use dechlorinated water, which is basically, I, or you could use rain water, honestly. Just take the water, it's like here. Or again, I mean, we have lots of rain. Just have some rain come down. Um, have a tub or something, fill it up, bucket or something, fill it up. You can use that water. Uh, stay away from chlorine, because chlorine is very bad for the fish. Uh, chlorine is not a big problem for me. If you really can't get chlorine-free water free, you could buy uh, stuff, uh, 8.45 ounce. I've used about half of them, but I was using that for pond also. 
if I'm just using that for my fish tanks, it would probably take about at least a couple of years. I should just wash them in there. I just gotta rinse them. Rinse them well. It's fine. So we we'll rinse them and rinse that a couple more times, and then we're gonna be putting them in. So basically here we got the results back. Uh, the pH is on the high end. It's around 7.8-ish, maybe a little bit lower, but it's under 8.0, so it's pretty much fine. Uh, it's gonna adjust later. The ammonia is around zero ppm. Uh, it's very low. We don't need to worry about that. Nitrite, same thing, very low. Nitrate, it looks like to be a little bit high on the high end, 5.0, but we're fine. So the outside temperature, we're reading around, I'm gonna say 44. It's been staying here for most of the time. We're gonna, okay, the most challenging part of all of this is trying to get these fish out. Um, I know that for fancy goldfish, they say they are gonna, like their ideal, like water temp range is somewhere uh, high 60s to low 80s around there. And uh, they typically can't survive below like 50 degrees, but I mean, obviously they did, as we see with my pond. But it's probably not that good for them, so we're still gonna try to get them in. And but the problem is they're still looking like they're pretty fast. So, um, and I got netting, which means I probably have to take the netting off in order to try to get them. It's gonna be pretty complicated trying to get get them up. Uh, acclimation shouldn't be a problem. I'm gonna go in there and test the water temperature in there. If it's about the same, I'm just going to have them acclimate for 10 minutes. Uh, we're not going to feed them for the first 24 to 48 hours just because they might be stressed. But after 24 hours, if they look like they want to eat, we're going to, we're, we're still going to have a uh, feed them a little bit. So, so these are the deshelved uh, peas I was talking about. They're uh, amazing food for fin fancy goldfish, especially, right? Um, they are kind of like a lexative, lexative. Uh, they make these goldfish poop uh, they wouldn't give them digestive problems which is one of the biggest problems you, uh, people with who own fancy goldfish have um, koi also eat them go, normal goldfish also eat them I'm gonna try to lure them over because the water uh, the water level is pretty high right now and I don't really want it to go down lower because we're gonna have like a negative uh, well not maybe not negative but like 20-ish degree weather uh, cold front coming in next week. The um, pond is going to be frozen, so I want to have as, the most water level as possible, so we're not going to drink it. So my idea is we're going to lure them over this part, which I have to took the netting off. We're going to lure them here, and then I'm going to have a net and try to scoop them up. We have to get two of them, uh, which is going to be a little bit difficult. I'm not going to film that just because I'm going to have one hand trying to catch the fish, the other hand trying to film. It's not going to work. So I'm going to See you guys again after I got the fish out. So it's about 20 minutes now and we're looking at a temperature of around like 50. So a 44 to 50, like it's a five degree jump. I don't see any problem with it. We're gonna take these fish out and put them in. Um, there is a little bit of trash on the bottom that got in from the uh, net and whatnot, but it's fine. We're gonna let these fish come in. We're gonna let them adjust for 24 hours. This is gonna be the end of this series. We might do a part three on this like two weeks later that I'm gonna post basically saying what, like how I've been like managing these fish. But in the meantime, uh, as you see here, uh, I'm gonna release them first and then I'm gonna talk about it. So here we have them all released. So this guy uh, and this guy, right? They all look pretty much the same. They're all fantail goldfish. This guy has a white nose and this guy has like a red nose. Albert name was one leopard. 
Uh, I'm gonna have you guys name that one because it didn't have a name yet. Um, they're both fantail goldfish. Pretty chunky. I like them. I like the way like look. I like the calico color. Uh, currently, I'm putting them in a 10 gallon tank. Uh, I feel almost to the top, so uh, it's definitely enough space for them um, for a winter. Uh, the leopard looks like he's fine. A little bit stressed, maybe. This guy looks he's a little bit too active, which I'm a little bit concerned about. Um, we shouldn't be moving this much. I don't know if it has bladder problems or whatnot. I might feed it some um, peas uh, about 24 hours later just to see how we do. Uh, if they're still being really stressed and if they start floating belly up, uh, hopefully that didn't happen. Knock on wood. Uh, if they, but if they do end up doing that, I might have to administer some like stress relief medicine. Uh, I have a couple of them. Uh, they use, they can also treat parasites. We might administer some of that over a week. If that happens, hopefully it doesn't. Um, and also aquarium salt also works and I have some of them. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, and share and name that fish in the comment section below. Out.